Hi, I'm Clark Carlisle, and I have recurrent complex depressive disorder, but that's okay. My name's Susan Kalman, and I'm a comedian and writer. And sometimes I don't want to speak to another single human being, and that's okay. Sometimes when I talk about my mental health, some people don't have a clue what I'm going on about, and that's okay. You can be vulnerable, I can be vulnerable, we can all be vulnerable, and that's okay. Depression is real. And sometimes I do not have the words to explain it. And that's okay. 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 I remember a therapist telling me to like give my mental health issues a name because it's quite powerful and it can be really helpful, but it could also make you look properly mad. Like I have had times where I've been like sitting on public transport and I've gone, Leap off, Jareth the Goblin King. And people are like, what? But it works for me. Uh, my depression, I don't know, some people call it the black dog and people have various ways of uh, personifying it. Is, uh, I call it the crab of heat. From a young age, I've had obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, you know, obsessive compulsive disorder, I describe as your brain refusing to acknowledge what your eyes can see. You know, when I'm in the depths of an episode, um, it's an incredibly lonely place, no matter how many people are around me. For me, what, one of the biggest symptoms of, of my depression is that uh, I just want to switch off from the world. I think I lead quite a stressful life professionally, so I've always short of time, always busy, always feel like I'm letting somebody down. So I can experience a feelings of being overwhelmed and being overwhelmed would then transpire to anxiety. And then obviously anxiety can also manifest as depression. If I'm the sort of person who will always figure a solution, but the way that depression felt was I don't know how to stop myself crying every night. When I'm in a, a real bad patch of anxiety and depression, it's like everything, it's like every moment, there's no sort of off switch. I would call it depression in hindsight. I went through a very, very dark time, uh, culminating and building up to a period uh, around Christmas time in 2009 where I nearly took my own life. Yeah, as a juxtaposition as to how I feel right now on a sunny morning in London, it's a million, million miles away. What it feels like is um, like, I just want the whole world to, to swallow me up. I don't want to be around people. I don't want to communicate with anyone. It was bulimia. It was suicidal thoughts every day. I think mental strength can be tougher than physical strength because I suppose we all know what to do if we don't feel physically strong. But when our mental strength is challenged, that's really hard um, because we have to dig deep and sometimes we can't go any deeper. For me, it's not about a cure or anything like that. It's like it's an ongoing process and I have to deal with it every day if I want to live a normal life. That act you have to do if you're going through something mental where you're sort of putting on a brave face for people because you don't want to feel abnormal because you know if you feel abnormal, you'll feel worse. I think the best responses are that they're there for you. My brother always says you have two eyes, two ears and one mouth. <laughs> so let's do a little less talking and a little more listening. Even myself, I sometimes find it easier to tell my publishers or whoever it is that I can't do something because of food poisoning or the norovirus or the flu than to say, oh, I'm like too anxious to leave my house today. You know, that's still a hard thing. I didn't think it was a good enough reason to take time off work, for example. I would have to make something up and say I had a stomach bug or the flu. You know, the amount of times I got food poisoning, they must have thought, mm, you should really stop eating shellfish, Bryony. It's been a tough journey. It's been emotionally uh, and physically draining. The life that I've led, I haven't had the choice to not share things because they're so visible and they're so permanent. I never had that moment of feeling like I was revealing a secret, if that makes sense. I will say that in my little lifetime, that mental health has turned into something people can actually talk about now and you're not looked at as like, you need to be locked up. While I was in a sort of total state of suicidal panic disorder, I can remember someone asking, um, a doctor asking if I've ever taken recreational drugs before in my life. And I answered honestly, and then they didn't want to, you know, I could see the sort of moral questioning of it. I'm trying to find a, a therapist is like going on a date. Sometimes you have disastrous dates. 
um, and you just have to keep trying. But if you do find the right one, it can really, really help. It's important to speak to people. It's important to, to be honest with yourself. It's more about listening and it's more about accepting. The more we talk about it, you know, the more we can support one another. You're not alone.